Hello everyone, I'm Ethan, the founder of Outcast Games, and in this video, I'll be starting a series on distance matching. And to begin this series, I just want to cover what distance matching is. Now, distance matching is, if for those of you who are unaware, is the way to handle the playback of the animations that's a bit different than just regular in-place animations or root motion animations. To understand distance matching, you have to have a good understanding of in-place animation, root motion animation, what makes them different. So I'm going to start there. For a character that's walking around using in-place animations, the animation for walking or running, um, if you just play it, looks like the character's on a treadmill. Their legs are moving, their arms are swinging, but they're not going anywhere. And that's because there is no forward movement in the animation. The animation is just something that's being played in place relative to the character's location in the world. So you could make your character go really slow and you could be playing an in place running animation and the feet would be sliding on the ground and it just wouldn't look real. The speed of the gait doesn't match the speed of the character. Root motion well, it is different than in place. Root motion is root motion. The root bone in the character's skeleton moves with the rest of the animation. The character doesn't look like it's walking in a treadmill. The character looks like it's just walking forward like normal. And so you might be thinking, well, why not just use root motion? And that's because when you use root motion, movement is derived from the baked movement of an animation. So to go forwards, you have to pull the forward movement from the forward walking animation and just use that. And so that takes away a little bit of player agency because the movement of the character is controlled by the animations and not directly by the WASD keys or a joystick. You're inserting a sort of middleman in between the player and their input and the movement of the character and that takes away the player's ability to precisely control that character so although root motion will look really nice you take away from the player's ability to control the character so it's very much a case-by-case -case basis sort of thing where in place animation is better in some cases and root motion is better in other cases and a lot of times the two are mixed together. Lots of games will use in-place animation for regular locomotion, but then lots of root motion animation when in combat. And so, distance matching is a method to take sort of what's great about in-place animation and what's great about root motion animation and combine them together into a single thing. And Epic developed the technique in their game Paragon. And what distance matching does is a sort of reverse root motion. Instead of pulling the motion from the root bone and applying it to the character, it takes the motion from the character, from the character movement component, and then it essentially applies that to the animation in the way. It takes the distance that the animation, that the in-place animation, if it was a root motion the animation would have traveled, over a certain period of frames and only plays the frames it needs to so that the distance in the animation and the distance moved in the game world match up and this reduces foot sliding the character looks more grounded and things look more real and distance matching is really used with starting and stopping animations because that's where foot sliding can be most evident and epic developed other techniques for walking um, with, with the walking loops because distance matching is a little bit too complex it there are more efficient solutions so they use distance matching on start and stop animations as well as in place rotation and they use something called speed warping for the walking or running loops where the distance between the feet Essentially, the size of the gate is changed instead of the speed of the animation. Usually, the animations will be sped up or slowed down if the character is walking faster or slower than the animation, and that can look unrealistic really fast. And so, what 
speed warping does is it changes the distance between the feet, it changes the size of the gait, and makes the character take small steps or larger steps so that the animation isn't going really fast or really slow and just looking strange. And although distance matching really is just what is being done in the start and stop animations, distance matching over the years has really become a term that's used and applied to a locomotion system like the locomotion system in Paragon, which includes speed warping, which includes orientation warping, a procedural way to um, change the character's orientation, the direction they're moving in, without using a blend space between like a right strafing animation and a forwards walking animation. And so it just rotates the pelvis and the legs and rotates some of the bones in the spine and it looks a whole lot more realistic and you don't get any of the weird results in foot sliding that you sometimes, oftentimes, get with blend spaces. Another example is slope warping, something they implemented as well. Um, and that's much more commonplace. You see that around more often. People have been doing lots of things with that in the new control rig. And so distance matching, speed warping, orientation warping, and slope warping, those are all things that I will be doing my best to cover, explain, and teach how to do in this series. And I hope that you're just as excited as I am for this one. It's going to be a great series. I haven't seen a lot of distance, good distance matching tutorials anywhere on YouTube. There's been one series calling itself a distance matching tutorial. I'm not going to say any names, but it's really just using and mixing root motion and in-place animation as far as I've seen. So distance matching is complicated until it's not. There's a certain threshold you cross in your game development journey where lots of things that seem crazy and really hard to figure out with distance matching become easier to figure out the more you know. So I'm just making this series to really try to help people who were in my spot half a year ago to a year ago really trying to figure this stuff out and about ready to give up or giving up for months on end like I did. And just to help give help you take you through it the rest of the way and explain everything behind it and make it just a great learning experience. So I've been ranting for a bit. The video is getting a little bit long for just a little introduction video. So I'm going to cut it here and I will see you all in the next video where we will set up a project for distance matching. I'll see you then.